but we're also a leader in AI. We shipped over 2 billion AI-enabled products so far. That's something that no other company has been able to do. We started working on 6G in 2020. We're expecting 6G deployment in the 2029-2030 timeframe. And we've put a 6.7 billion JACE LLM completely running on a smartphone. You speak to your car, you have a red, uh, a red light on the dashboard. You say, what this is? Ah, you need to choice change your oil, but you can still uh, drive the car for a month. All of that is happening because the computer is speaking your language. I'm Wasim Shurbaji. I'm uh, president for Middle East and Africa for Qualcomm and also Senior Vice President Government Affairs for the EMEA region. So Ali, the, the Qualcomm changed a lot over the last couple of years. We're best known actually for the creation of wireless technology. We're the leader in that space. From 3G to 4G to 5G, and now we're working on 6G. I can speak more about that but we evolved to be also the computing company for high performance, low power compute. That's the Snapdragon piece, but we're also a leader in AI. We shipped over 2 billion AI enabled products so far. That's something that no other company has been able to do, combining this leadership between connectivity, AI, and high performance, low power computing, transforming many industries. Every 10 years, every decade, there is a new generation of technology. Um, we started working on 6G in 2020. We're expecting 6G deployment in the 2029-2030 timeframe. The best way to think about 6G is this merger of the virtual world, the digital world, and the real world. And you make it in a seamless way. AI at the heart of it changing the human machine interface with wireless technology that make you super immersive in these kind of services. So you need an infrastructure that enables you to support these kind of services, very, very high data rate, super low latency, and enabling many industries to transform. Now, uh, let me unpack a bit what AI is right now, how we see it. A lot of people are seeing AI developing in the cloud. That's all the Gen AI piece, and you have prompts, and you have responses and inference from the cloud. We're operating there. But there's also a whole range of AI development on all kinds of devices, what we call at the edge. These are the devices you use every day, from your smartphone to your car, to your smart glasses, or the PC, as you rightly said so. So what's AI on device, as we call it, or edge uh, AI? It's the capability of running multi-billion parameter models on the chip, whether this is on a smartphone or this AI PC and our partnership, our great partnership with Microsoft that you have seen, where we enabled, based on a very advanced chip architecture, these capabilities to run continuously on the device without harming the battery life of the device. These collaboration in the region are extremely important because what's going on with AI is actually a reset of the industry. Everybody can play. Everybody can become a leader. There is no legacy. You can be driving the future. And we see actually the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the UAE at the forefront of that uh, innovation. And so we started that journey with key players, um, Aramco uh, in, uh, in the kingdom and the G42, uh, Core 42, Inception here in uh, the UAE. And both partnerships have been proven to be extremely valuable. I do see a very fruitful, exciting uh, 
prospects for the region, for the ecosystem in the region, for the startup community. And you can count on Qualcomm, completely on Qualcomm, to enable that future to be positive, safe, but also inclusive. And I will add one more thing because I know your audience is about startups. When we started this journey of uh, AI, we thought you have all these LLMs, but ultimately the user will use services. And you will have lots of app developers who will look at the LLM as their forth, uh, you know, front, uh, front facing to, to, to users. So they need to integrate that in a simple way on smartphones, on other kind of devices like cars and, uh, and smart glasses. So we created the AI hub. The AI hub is actually a place where you have large language models um, and where we'll have Chase, where an app developer can just choose an LLM, develop its app and push it on all kinds of Snapdragon enabled devices. And that will enable a whole range of innovation locally in the region. So with the partnership with, uh, with Microsoft to enable Copilot Plus, which is, when you think about it, the major evolution of Windows is Windows 95. It's AI Windows. And the first chip provider to enable that to happen was Qualcomm. Because of our capabilities on the chip with CPU, GPU, and something called the NPU, the Neural Processor Unit, which run the AI agent all the time when you're using your PC. And as I said, you know, you keep your battery life. We're in, the, in this uh, area to transform it. We brought innovation back to the Windows uh, ecosystem and we're here to stay and diversify in that space. We are, uh, Ali, we are the most diversified uh, company when it comes to chipset supply chain. Uh, we work with all uh, the major uh, uh, foundries uh, in the world, um, in, uh, in uh, US, in Europe, in Taiwan, in Korea. Uh, we love how we're, uh, the partnership we have uh, with them. Uh, there was a whole conversation about the diversification of a supply chain from a geographical perspective to enable more resiliency in the system. We've seen things like the CHIPS Act in the EU and the US, these are important initiatives too, to enable ca new capabilities. We will need a lot of more capabilities. We need a lot more capacity. And we're really happy to see these new investments in new foundries to enable that resilient supply chain in the future.